And welcome to FIG's weekly economic and trading update. I'm Mark Bailey and this is Jessica Russett. So Mark, this week uh, the RBA came out and discussed their concerns still with the property prices and also um, spoke that there's potentially a property bubble at the moment. We also saw some weakening in uh, the commodity space as well with the iron ore price coming off a bit there. Talk us through it. Yes, there's been a lot of uh, data on house prices. We had some house price data out of um, Australia as well, again showing strong growth. And as you say in the RBA minutes, they're saying there's associated risk building up in that property sector, in the housing um, sector. And as a result, ASIC and both APRA have been coming out and saying, look, we're looking at this space. And so they may actually start to again reduce the amount of loan growth that you're seeing in certain parts of their loan books, especially probably more on the investor side of things. So just something for uh, investors to be aware of. And also, as you, as you rightly point out, there has been some volatility in the in the commodities complex. Iron ore and oil has, has come off its, its recent highs, and that's fed through into equities as well. So you've seen a bit of a, a wobble on the global equity markets. Interestingly, there's been a bit more commentary, as always happens when you do get a bit of volatility in the space, about you know, are equities overvalued? Uh, there was a Bank of America survey of institutional investors that said yes for the, for the uh, highest percentage for a long time that US equities especially are overvalued and maybe it's time to move into more defensive assets. And also Dennis Gartman who produces a Gartman letter which is a very well read um, and researched uh, letter, daily letter to investors. He said he's actually gone short equities for the first time in a very long while. So again, it just highlights to investors that now is a really good time. You haven't had a major correction to just really address and look at the risks and the returns and make sure they're comfortable with their overall asset allocation. Um, because at the moment, you know, potentially equities are really overvalued and maybe it's a time to take some profits and take a bit of money off the table. So Jess, what's been rumbling in your jungle this week? Well, we've actually seen a trend emerging where clients have been uh, adding more investment grade bonds and also high rated bonds to their portfolios. So it seems to be a little bit of a safe haven play and clients taking a bit of risk off the table and just right. adding an more of a diversified allocation, also a shorter dated allocation as well to their portfolios. So we had the tier two floating rate note investment grade bonds that were quite highly traded last week. So it was the uh, AAI 2022 call floating rate note and also the Bendigo and Adelaide 2021 call floating rate note. Both of these are actually only available to wholesale clients, although the last week I did speak about those two tier two bonds that retail clients can participate in. So both of these bonds uh, come to clients at an indicative projected uh, call yield of four and a half percent, which is quite attractive for the, uh, the investment grade that they both are. We've also seen clients looking also in the uh, senior debt space as well and so it was the Downer 2022 uh, maturity bonds uh, and also Fitch uh, reaffirmed their outlook and rating for those um, that bond post the uh, offer on Spotless, that's right. And uh, the other flo floating rate note uh, investment grade senior debt bond is the DBC T21 floating rate note. No, that's the Dalrymple Bay. Coal terminal, that's correct, yes. And so um, the DBCT comes at a uh, projected indicative yield to maturity of 4.7% and the down of 22s I spoke about comes to clients at 4%. So these aren't the highest yielding offering that FIG has no. for client, but the point is that it's a more conservative uh, approach to the portfolio and we have noticed that clients have been reassessing the uncertainty in the markets at the moment and have been putting in these allocations just as a bit of a safe haven play. And so usually uh, we have a lot of clients chasing high yield, which is still the case, but there does seem to be a bit more of a uh, reserved and reassessed approach we're seeing in the portfolio allocations at the moment. No, I think that's great to see from, from my side because that's what we've been talking to investors for the last six exactly, to 12 months yeah. in terms of where we are in the credit cycle, what we're trying to achieve in terms of that portfolio, and especially, you know, as we've talked about, you know, in equities just starting to wobble, it's a good time to assess their asset allocation move a bit more defensively yes. to protect for that downside and it sounds like clients are, are listening and also actioning uh, on some trades as well. Yeah that's right and I, I mean we have always traded these lines but I certainly couldn't say that six months ago we saw the, the interest and the demand in them that we, we are seeing at the moment. So this upcoming week we have a GDP figures out of the US, what else should investors be aware of? 
Yeah, Jess, that's a, a fairly big um, print in terms of economics, uh, looking for around about 2% for the GDP print. Also looking for the Fed's uh, preferred measure of inflation, the core PCE, that is out later on in the week, and also some important PMI um, figures out as well. It's a very, very light data week um, for Australia, so the focus will definitely be across the Atlantic in, uh, in, in the States for the data. So Jessica, what's going to be interesting for you next week? Yeah, sure. So there has been demand in the US dollar denominated space for investment grade bonds as well. So we'll be focusing on trying to find a bond to add to our direct bonds list that's also of investment grade. And this will allow clients to reallocate and look at rebalancing their US dollar portfolio and potentially moving out of some unrated and into the investment grade um, space. Right. Sounds a very sensible option again, you know, carrying that, that theme. Of, theme yeah, correct, exactly. yeah. Right. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Mark. And thank you for watching. If you need any more information, please go to The Wire. Mm -hmm.